Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services and RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Hey, welcome back if you've been with us before and if you're new, welcome to the show. I'm Rob Scribner. I'm your host at RV Talk Radio here. We are a registered podcast, so you can also listen to us on iTunes and through your cell phone. And it's simple. You just download a free little software that can play podcasts, and then you just go to the search feature and put RV Talk Radio, and we should show right up, and then you can subscribe and listen to us every week. So you can always plan on hearing our show on Mondays, and this is Monday. And you have all week to listen to the show, and by the time you're done with it, Monday will be back. So, anyway, welcome to the show, and we're glad to have you. Well, this has been a week for us to call on the numbers that listen and subscribe and follow all of our social networks as far as uh, the podcasts and the videos and the Facebooks and Twitter and all that stuff we do. And what we're doing is talking about the turning point of life. Now, the reason I bring this subject up is Sherry and I are not considered old, but we're not considered young. And for some of those people that know us, it realize that I just retired from an aerospace company at 55. And Sherry is 55 too, we're both the same age. And so we're not really seniors, and we're still very young at heart, and we've done exciting things in our lives, but we're at that point of, okay, we're not invincible, we figured that out a few years back, and we, are, we know that we're getting into the years of <laughs> getting older, um, not being able to do all the things we used to uh, of course you got the health issues now of course well, since I retired I don't have any, uh, insurance but Sherry's still working so we fought, fell over to her insurance so we still have the health insurance and we can't even think about the Medicare or anything that stuff until we're in our 60s nor do we get to see Social Security and we cross our fingers it's still there and gee just recently they're starting to talk about articles of some pension funds being cut back uh, in the state side which doesn't affect Sherry and I but uh, that's just sad totally sad I just can't believe how America takes care of their uh, aging people I'll say it that way so yeah uh, so the, 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 the discussion is what are you doing to prepare for getting older and I don't care if you're 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever your age is. You really need to think about this. I wish I was thinking stronger about it when I was in my 20s and 30s. Um, and, and reality didn't start hitting me till like maybe 45. That, hey, uh, I think I'm getting older. So, <laughs> luckily we've kind of discovered the RV life. And, and when we talk about the subject... Uh, let's put in there for sure that I mean the RV lifestyle is there and Sherry and I are in it and it's really helping us as far as living with less but not giving up all the nice things we had when we had prime you know really good jobs and 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 but when we, when you retire you in a lot of cases you're taking a pay cut so by the time you get ready to do what you want to do or full time or, or travel or do something special in your older age let's say um, or even younger ages it doesn't matter um, you just can't say tomorrow I'm gonna start traveling the United States well you got a few things to work out like uh, how are you gonna pay for it how are you gonna pay for that gas how are you gonna pay for the insurance what happens if you get sick what happens if you have an emergency blah 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 it just goes on and on and then, you know, of course, everybody has a different scenario. Well, I have my house, or I don't have a house, or my house isn't paid for, or my house is paid for. Do I want to maintain an RV and have a house? 
uh, do I will I have the resources to even do that? Or even if I did, do I actually want to leave a house empty and um, my health isn't so good? Or maybe I have cancer or maybe I have a prescriptions I got to keep up. Everybody has a different story. So here me and Sherry are sitting here going, all right, we still got some steam left in us and we got some things we want to do. And so it's it's time to kind of get the, the masses that listen to our shows and we really appreciate all of you and let's start talking about this stuff and we're asking you what do you want us to talk about pertaining to that subject of the turning point of when you're gonna whether you want to use the turning point of becoming an RVer or the turning point of I'll use the working retirement or retirement I'll just put it that way because it's gonna be different not everybody has pensions uh, not everybody's going to have big Social Security. Uh, some people are divorced. Some people, you know, this goes all on and on. Everybody's situation is different. But to put this on the board, put this on a plate and say, people, let's talk about this subject more. And and I want to hear it from all ages. And I'm not looking for criticism and, and uh, troll type stuff. I mean constructive feedback. And constructive questions that you want me and Sherry to pursue and start asking and, and investigating. We're here and we talk to you guys every every week and every day in videos. And if there's you know we want to there's always the fun side and the, and and that'll always be there. But occasionally we want to make sure we put out a video or a podcast that really makes people think and is helpful information for just being an RVer no matter what age or maybe you're considering becoming a full-time or considering retirement or now I want you to put on the plate do we need to look over the border is the golden year years going to be so ridiculous because services are so expensive that what little money that we do make is just going to be our roof over our head and food and health insurance is that is that our life? Is that what we're going to be doing when we get older? And that doesn't sound very fun. And so, uh, uh, I you know, and and, and the other thing I've kind of noticed, and, and we're doing research on, is uh, you know, uh, and here's a <laughs> great way of saying: it. there's countries out there that don't spend all their money on military. So guess what? They spend it on their people. So. Is there other places, maybe in Latin America, or, or that we might want to consider? We are researching that. We actually are going to maybe do some trips. Uh, since we're down here in Arizona, we're near the border. We're going to do some dabbling in that subject matter. So uh, that's a shame. I feel terrible that I have to consider that in order to enjoy my golden years. I know that medical will come up more. I know that some days Sherry and I don't have any, but may need prescriptions. And things are out of control here in this Ob Obamacare is the numbers are as, are as high as a very expensive RV payment. <laughs> so, I don't know which direction we're going to go, but um, we're brainstorming. This is a brainstorming session, and we're bringing you in on this. So on our videos, we want to hear constructive comments and, and ideas and, and applauds if we've, if we've nailed it. Um, and also on the podcast, you know, you can go to our website at RV Talk Radio, which is our podcast. Go to the uh, uh, contact us page. And you can put your comments in there. And don't worry about your spelling and stuff. We don't care. Anyway, just the fact that you're trying to get a point across. We love it. In our videos, you can leave comments. Or you can email me directly at rob at RV Talk Radio. And it goes right to my cell phone email so I can see it. And uh, first thing you'll get from me always is a thank you for your, me for your message. Unless you're being real nasty, and, and that doesn't happen. I, I don't think I've really gotten that kind of stuff. And Anyway, I appreciate that, people. So anyway, there it is. We're talking about the turning point of life. So 
So just to make matters even more complicated, we're actually thinking about regrouping a little bit. And so uh, during this period while Sherry's still working full time and we uh, still are pretty comfortable, we're uh, finalizing everything that has to do with debt. So there isn't much left. We just have a little bit of stuff and we've been procrastinating on it and we're taking care of that actually this particular week. And uh, which puts us in a great position of what we want to do next. And so we're brainstorming. These are not, nothing definite, but there's a little bit of talk between Sherry and I about let's look into maybe doing a caravan down south somewhere, maybe on the Baja or um, uh, just you know, a little jaunt here that you can go over to the, the uh, ocean. Uh, it's about 100 miles in in Mexico and, and you can go with a caravan if you like. And uh, do a little taste the waters a little bit, see what it's like. Um, it's getting, it's kind of hard for Sherry and I to uh, get used to the heat. And we're kind of concerned about our pets. And uh, of course we're doing everything backwards. We're in Arizona during the summer. And we know what to expect. We've actually lived here for a year. We know what the next few months are going to be like. And uh, we'll be fine. And But, you know, when September comes, I've got like nine months of summer-like uh, beautiful weather coming. So for about three months, you have to kind of hide in your air conditioning uh, wherever you go. And, and that's reality. But So we have a little bit of a debate or brainstorming going on to do a little dabbling of looking at over the border. And we're actually even looking farther than that, but in a different process. And then uh, the next thing that Sherry and I would love to do is to go north, but really go north. Now, yeah, I, last year and this year, there's some uh, channels that are doing the Alaska thing. And it's like, great. Alaska, I love it. I mean, I grew up as a salmon fisherman. I've owned a boat for 25 years. Uh, I was a deckhand in Westport as a teenager actually working on the fishing boats and stuff so I, i'm that's our cup of tea and we're crabbing and shrimping doing it ourselves we ran our own uh, shrimp pots in the hoods canal blah 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 this goes on and on we we're northwest people I, i'm also a hunter and a fisherman and a fly fisherman so and so is sherry fisher person so and my kids are by the way <laughs> and of course none of them live in the northwest so we're thinking about maybe next, uh, which is only three quarters of a year away, and we need that to prepare, is we're thinking about regrouping with the equipment, like actually changing what we're using today. And we're brainstorming. In fact, we're going to be looking at units and stuff. And this is stuff that we want to plan out and, and really take a look at. But even downsizing a little more to going down to one vehicle, and changing to a motorhome instead of a fifth wheel. Brainstorming, once again, guys, this is just brainstorming. But what really gets under my skin is, is if we do a Northwest trip, everybody talks about, oh, we're going to Alaska. And then, of course, they always go to the same places uh, because it's, you know, not their, they're not native Northwest kind of folks that. Uh, so you're going to hear about the same places pretty much. But what happened to the 1,000 or 1,500 miles of Canada? Uh, did, did they... Wh wh why can't... There is... That can't... <laughs> I get all peeved about this. That is a beautiful country. Uh, British Columbia. Uh, the other provinces. I can't remember all the names. Uh, we, uh, Jasper and all these places. Canloops. Uh, we actually do a lot of fishing up there, uh, Little Fort area, and 100 Mile House, and Bridge Lake area, and uh, Prince Rupert, Prince George, all these beautiful, beautiful places in Canada, and it, nobody talks about it. They just like drive through Canada, it goes blank, nobody talks about it, no pictures, occasionally we parked here and there, no big deal, and absolutely skip Canada, and Canada... I'm sorry, but that's not going to happen with RV Travel Buddy and uh, RV Talk Radio. We love Canada. Canada's awesome, and the people in Canada are awesome. 
And so we're thinking about a six to eight month kind of trip of going north and working north and then coming and working north not slowly but i mean not fast but slowly and and actually show you some of these things that everybody's not telling you about they're just driving through and it's such a shame oh my gosh canada is awesome and, and of course we want to see uh, alaska but i can assure you and sherry and i go since we're outdoors uh, fishermen type people that you'll see a, con uh, a side of Alaska you probably have never seen before or maybe just a little bits of it but we'll really show you what it's like but we're actually thinking about why we're still young why we still got the energy we can use the next seven months to really uh, store away the funds because all we have coming in is uh, what little we make off of YouTube and some of our stuff and which is very little trust me and a, and a pension and a pension's uh, nothing to brag about it's not really until we get into our real senior days in our 60s that we could survive off of our pension and social security and we do have money put aside and we can't touch it and we're not going to touch it it's for senior days um, but we're do we're debt free we only carry one debt and that's after next week is the RV and we have a reason for that cuz RVs are a terrible investment and so no matter how you do it you're gonna lose it's just how you want to lose it and I prefer just to make a well first of all <coughs> Sherry and I like uh, new we like things fairly new or new so we'll pay, we'll pay a mint probably and just like Gone with the Winds when they're buying their boat, it's like uh, it made more sense to spend more money. But safety, especially on the water, and we know the water. Sherry and I have been on it for years. Uh, they made a great decision, even though it's going to cost them more and they have to get a loan. But <clears throat> we're the same way. So we go with a motorhome. We want to shorten ourselves up, get down to one vehicle, get our costs uh, where our main cost is the RV itself. And we have ways of keeping the cost down, but we're not going to be like those hide in a Walmart every parking lot that we can. We still don't mind paying. We're just going to be smart about it. But once again, I just want to remind you that this is brainstorming. This is just throwing it out there. But uh, the big part is everybody else has got to be facing these same kind of things too. Like, what are you going to do? And, and not everybody is as fortunate to have a pension and not everybody is going to have uh, um, or a married couple when they get into their social security days where they'll have two incomes. Um, some people will have to work the whole time. A lot of folks are going to be work campers. I know it's different. It's not the same for everyone. And of course, if you're 20 or 30 or 40 and you're a van person uh, traveling around, you're, you're just thinking for the now. And the now is it's nothing wrong with that but pretty soon you'll start realizing that uh, maybe I should think a little bit ahead and what do you what kind of person are you going to be are you gonna if you had family at all if you have kids or anything um, how are you gonna be a burden to them um, <laughs> I told Sherry if I was getting to be a real burden to her that we'd just go hiking up at uh, Mount Hood or something and just let me get lost. And then that'll take care of the issue. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, I didn't really. Well, I kind of said that. But anyway. Uh, so now we're just calling on you guys to say, all right, guys, uh, we're at this actually unique age that... Uh, the questions we're asking is the same questions a 40-year-old should be asked, or a 30-year-old, or a 20-year-old. What am I going to do when I get there? And can I afford the way I like to live today? Will I be able to live comfortable and be happy living comfortable, you know, with less income? Because it's going to be less, um, because that's the American way, I guess. But uh, maybe it's not the American way. Maybe we need to actually look at our neighboring countries and see they have some wonderful programs for people that are seniors and your money goes a long ways because they're more into people services lower uh, you know cost of living 
people make you know only twenty five fifty dollars a week down there uh that's nothing to american and that's and uh, if you're down there and and they are making money from you doing services for you you're helping them too in in their way and so wow i mean it's a it's a lot to think about really i mean i really honestly want you to think about what are you gonna do when you get to your turning point So, changing the subject a little bit now, um, I'm going to talk about Cinder for a minute. Uh, of course, we're an RVer with uh, pets, and you guys all know Cinder, our chocolate lab. And now that we're down here, we need to update her shots. She's uh, due for one of her shots that has to do with kennel cough that you do yearly. And um, a couple of months, I think some of your yearly shots are going to be up, up. And so when you go to another state, typically you have to get another exam, which is fine because Cinder is a purebred. And when we had her um, spaded, uh, she uh, has um, um, incontinence. And so she takes a, little, a pill for that. And, and she doesn't have a problem because of her prescription. So we have to get that renewed down here so we can keep her prescription with her and she takes two little tablets one uh, every 12 hours and not a problem and that happens uh, a lot especially with purebreds and females and when they get spaded so <laughs> um, first time I had a dog that had that issue but once I researched it I found out it's not uncommon anyway so we're down in uh, Arizona and, and we don't let cinder go running around on stuff and of course this time of year you got to watch out for the rattlesnakes and with a dog, typically they're always using their nose, they're going to get bit in the face, and you probably have about 20 minutes before the dog will probably cease to exist. And so you can get a vaccine uh, that we found out. I didn't know about this, and I, I, hope, I, I, I think I mentioned this on the last show, that kind of buys time. And so uh, we're going to find out, and I'll tell you more about it next week when I get, you know, uh, hear directly from the vet. But uh, so we're going to have them educate us about that particular vaccine. Is there any side effects, things like that? And but at the same time, we're just not letting Cinder run free at all, as far as going out uh, while we're in the desert area, and, and we're in a Fort McDowell area, and so. It's pretty primitive out here, and so there's definitely critters, and so uh, it, um, we just keep her on a leash and be vigilant. We got to make sure, and when we put her in the little dog park well, that we have here, we just kind of take a look around, see if uh, some reason the rattlesnake didn't come into the area. Uh, I've not seen anything in the park at all, but I've seen not that maybe 300 400 yards away down a road not that far from here we actually saw one go across the street so they're nearby so uh that's just how it is in arizona and of course if you're watching the arizona news most of the hikers people hike all the time around here and those guys are being uh, uh surprised <laughs> occasionally here and there and and you got to know what to do and you got to talk about it. you can't ignore it and no matter where you live there's always something that's some kind of issue um not so much in the northwest we're not used to it but um if you're not gonna live a little you know it, it's just uh the world has different things and and you don't get you don't freak out about it you just be more vigilant uh, before you sit on a rock before you look uh, lean on a log or 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 when you're hiking you just kind of look ahead a little bit inspect the area be vigilant so uh, so uh, we'll, we'll let you know in the next show uh, after uh, uh, we talk to the vet and try to make sure we pass on to you what we find out. The other thing they have problems with here is uh, they call it valley fever, which is uh, uh, something your pets can pick up just from the soil. And uh, there, I, there isn't really a, a shot for that, but if the dog gets it... Um, basically you need to get them on antibiotics right away so you got you want to take when your dog's showing being sick just like being sick um, you want to get them to the vet get them diagnosed and get them on treatment 
and they probably will be fine, but, but you still need to be vigilant on that too. So those are the two primary things we're concerned about with Cinder and getting her normal shots. So we'll let you know how that goes, but uh, this is just a little education for people that, hey, if you want to travel and you're going to have your pets with you, you need to know this stuff. And so do your homework, talk to your vet, and then when you go to new regions, stay up with the shots and get educated in the region from vets that live in this area that can say, uh, and I'm hoping to find one that says, no, that's not really a, a shot she needs. Uh, is, is, you know, I want to know the ins and outs of everything that Cinder gets because she is a family member, and if we made a mistake, it just break our heart. So now I get a secret. I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about Sherry. Yep. I think if I don't be careful, she's going to make me buy something that's just going to drive me crazy. She just bought one of those Fitbit uh, watch things. A, a nice one. It's a nice one. It's, uh, and, and, and no help from my daughter. My daughter had to show it to her. Uh, says, look, mom, what I got, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, I need one of those. And sure enough. Well, you know, we're ordering a Fitbit for Sherry, and she just got it today. So right now, she's doing laundry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes, I help her with laundry when I can. Um, but when we do this, a lot of times I'll do my show while she's out and about, so I'm not interfering with her time to be able to watch television and quiet time, all that stuff. Or what she said, <laughs> or I don't pull her on the shows. I got her on the show last week, and I, that was pretty good. So anyway, uh, and we just actually launched a video uh, with her on there that we're talking about the same subject about um, your uh, turning point in life. And so uh, we're really doing a call to action from all of our listeners and all of our followers to say, let's, let's really talk about this. And so anyway, um, now my biggest fear is she's going to want me to get one. And so I want to report to you that I have actually lost 12 pounds. And it's been a couple, and it's not fast, it's happening, but I think one is we're eating better, we are walking more, we are more active. Uh, I, either that or the sunshine and the heat is just sucking all the water out of me, I don't know. But it, it appears that I'm on the right course to dropping some weight. Now, I've told you before that I put on a lot of weight really fast when I quit smoking. <laughs> and... Uh, Boy, I was like only three or four months, and I put on like 30 pounds uh, right after I quit smoking. I'm glad it didn't tell me, oh, I should smoke again to quit. That would have been a bad excuse. So anyway, we're getting there. We're working it. So, um, And, you know, I may find this Fitbit thing that Sherry has to be awesome, and maybe I should get one. Um, but we'll see. But I bet you anything's like, you know, we should get you one, Rob. And then before you know it, we're going to, you know, I'll, you know, we'll be the next Jane Fonda's of RVing, I think. Whatever. But um, we are doing some things right. And um, uh, we also did some videos uh, coming out. We just bought a pressure cooker, you know, you know the one that everybody does a, does a video about. Of course, we did one. And we also... Um, are just learning how to cook um, more productively and learn you know the other thing is driving me crazy I don't know if it's driving you guys crazy but the grocery store in beef is just killing me now well, the other thing I never really told you is I have diverticulitis so red meat I think it's just tears me up a little bit and it kind of gets the sherry a little bit so we're kind of chilling out a little bit on the red meat we seem to be all right with like hamburger but um, anyway so the cost of red meat is like, oh my God. I mean, Sherry and I, when we were younger, it was like steak every other night. But now it's getting crazy. So it's like, all right, what can we do with some of the other cuts of meat um, and really get good meals out of it? And so you tend to have to have different cooking devices and processes. And so a pressure cooker uh, is going to allow us to try some different things. Now, our very first thing, and we did a video about, we actually made, for the very first time, we made chicken soup, chicken noodle soup. And the reason we kind of got going on that is we bought some chicken that was on sale. It was like 
four or five pounds of chicken breast and a really good price and we got it home and stuff and it was great except we found it was kind of tough and so my guess they were kind of fryers or something so it was one of our better purchases but we didn't want to throw it out but we want to find a different way to use that chicken so step one was all right let's start learning how to make soups and stuff or slow cook so we took one of those breasts and, and cut it up real good and did all the veggies and the chicken broth and noodles and the whole thing and cook and oh my gosh was that good oh, oh, oh i'm telling you it was awesome so it was like one of the best chicken soups i've had in a long time and a very simple uh, uh, and if you get to check the video out when it comes out uh it probably won't come out for another two weeks our videos are getting out there a little bit but uh anyway uh good stuff good cooking eating a little better a little less sweets and um, we're not giving up everything and um like today for lunch i mean went and got sushi that was yummy um watching our salt we're really good about um knocking we don't really we don't use a lot of salt here anyway so that's good that's probably uh help keep us from getting heart attacks and high, having high pressure uh blood pressure and stuff but anyway um that's kind of good news losing a little weight eating a little better it's happening kind of naturally and we actually are, are not eating out as much and i think it's because we're kind of enjoying cooking a little bit uh but we'll see how it goes when sherry starts kind of the nine to five thing uh, on a regular basis if we don't fall back into some bad habits i hope that doesn't happen so i've always got lots of work to do and and uh so we're trying to cook where we don't have to, uh, that we can have meals that will last for several days. And so, anyway, just thought I'd pass that on. But Fitbit, it'll, maybe we'll see in the future if I tell you, guess what I got, a Fitbit. <laughs> You'll know it's because Sherry made me get one. So now to move uh, to a couple of just interesting things I've noticed. Yesterday, I, I couldn't believe what I saw. I mean, I, I was just amazed. But some, you know, in a dog park, you meet people. And so uh, typically a lot of times I go to the little dog park that we have here and there's nobody there. And then there's a couple of pets that um, uh, Cinder remembers and she gets excited and she's like, oh boy, I got a playmate over there that I know. Well, last night, this couple came in with a great dane i mean not just a great dane a really big great dane we're talking this is one of the biggest great danes i've ever ever seen and i'm just thinking and he's in an rv <laughs> now i understand great danes are lovable great animals but that's a big ass oh, i'm sorry <laughs> e that's a big dog I don't care what you say that's a big dog it was like a it was like a pony that was a big dog even cinder is going what <laughs> what the heck is that it scared the heck out of her i've never seen even cinder's like you can't be a dog this is no way you could be a dog anyway so it was quite hilarious and and cinder was a little standoffish i was real surprised she's never done that before but this was a big dog i'm not kidding you and uh, so the other thing was kind of funny is remember last week I think I told you that Sherry and I we went out to hot tubs and she went in the swimming pool and this was in the evening and she saw a little bee in the top of the water and she went to brush it away and got stung and it's like really and so I think it was two nights ago we went out to the hot tubs and I'm sitting there and I put my arms up you know you just kind of keep try to cool off a little bit and you put your arms up into the, and I put my arms up and I feel this really sharp pinch thing on my elbow i got stung it's like are you kidding me the two times that we actually went to the pool and used it we both got stung and i think it's like fate of just because i gave my wife such a hard time about it that uh, you know god just came down and says guess what i'm gonna get you stung too and then your wife can make fun of you so anyway so uh at least we we've definitely uh checked it as, as we've both been you know sherry and i we're, uh, we're typical kids so we've all been stung several times and we don't have any issues and you never know when you get a little older so guess what we're fine so yeah and so the other thing is uh by the way we have a video out and uh 
we asked people, we had a little contest to give away an RV Talk Radio uh, sticker. And the last day of that contest is today. So if you happen to hear this video Monday, you have time to go back and uh, last um, Wednesday or Thursday, the 20th is when that video came out and it's asking you uh, if you have any good critter stories like ants or mice or anyway some of the there's not a lot of stories but there's some really good stories that were uh, submitted to us in the comment section of youtube of that video and if you put a um, a comment in there and uh we give you a thumbs up you can win a um rv talk radio window sticker and so there's a couple in there that are, oh my gosh, um, kind of stories. And uh, you've got to go read them. I mean, they're really, some of them are real long. But if you get a chance, can go to our YouTube channel, go to the 20th. The video came out there. It says hot tub, uh, something else, and critters. And so I, we're talking about, uh, I was showing people how I spray uh, the slides um, at least at least once a week. Because uh, we're battling those darn sugar ants. But down here, you could have a lot of other things. Well, there's another guy in Arizona that told us a story about their RV. And uh, you just got to go read the story. I don't want to uh, spoil the surprise. But what a story. So, anyway, if you have a really good um, critter story of your RV... Uh, I, I remember even talking to a guy that said they've been, they were invaded by... Uh, ladybugs really bad and it's like really and so i guess uh over in the, some of the states in the south uh the, the ladybugs are out of control so who would have thought so anyway um uh, if you have a good critter story about um your rv uh go to that video it has to be that video and in the comment section um uh, write up your story put it in there and uh uh, I don't want to announce or which ones uh, uh, we we picked or anything like that uh, till after this show um, produces out there and it comes out. And so uh, you just got to read these stories. I, I can't, you can't make this stuff up, people. I mean, our viewers are amazing people, but some of the stories that come out about our viewers are just over the top so once again as an RVers you just can't make this stuff up so go check it out uh, it was on the 20th it's about critters and hot tubs or whatever uh, it's a video on YouTube read the comments it, you'll you'll just you probably won't sleep tonight I can guarantee it well of course I've got to remind you that we'd love to hear from you. So if you get the chance to shoot us a note, you can go to RV Talk Radio, go to the comment sec, uh, go to the uh, contact us page, and shoot us a note. Tell us what you're thinking about. Ask us some questions. We'll put them on the show. Uh, didn't get anything new this week, uh, really. Uh, we really uh, went over a lot of questions that came from some viewers last week. And we're kind of hoping to get a couple more and we'll do another show like that. And I'll try to get Sherry back on. Don't tell her. Anyway, so uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was also you can contact me, uh, you know, directly at Rob at RV Talk Radio. Um, and if you watch our videos, just use the comment section. But, you know, you can go to our Facebook page. We have our own group. If you want to join our Facebook group for RV Talk Radio, you have to join. Uh, you can always message us at the top and those stay private. Or you can go to RV Travel Buddies Facebook and do the same thing. Go up to the top, hit message, and those messages come to us directly and they're private. Anyway, so we'd love to hear from you. We like the feedback. Uh, we really uh, need your help to grow and get better. And we, we need you to help us with that. So please take the time to share our videos. Tell people about us. Um, if you like a sticker, we do have stickers that you can get from us for five bucks. We really don't make much money off of any extra money we make off it, maybe like a buck. Um, it's just like a tip, and we appreciate that. But when you put a sticker on your car, or your car window, uh, it does help us. Uh, people get curious, they go find out what RV Talk Radio is all about. We, we seem to be getting a really good following, we seem to be on the target. We're 
trying to not to be associated with any one particular group. Uh, we love them all. There's uh, Sherry and I are not real big on clubs and stuff, but we really love good services and resources. And so, uh, we I hope you feel that flavor with our with our show. So we'd really love to hear your feedback. If you like to get some stickers, it helps us out. And uh, you can uh, look in the description below, and we have uh, we have a link directly to the stickers if you like to get one. Uh, we have other goodies too that people you can go to our shopping cart. We actually have a little shopping mall full of RV t um, travel buddy merchandise and and RV talk radio and little flashlights, all kind of cool stuff. And uh, <laughs> I got to tell you about this hat I bought. So I finally I wanted to get a good hat. You know, you can get hats that are kind of like chintzy and you can get them real cheap and you can have your logo put them on and stuff it's like and so i had one made and it's like i never wear it it's like are you kidding me so i finally ordered through this company that we're affiliated with where you can have stuff made and so since we weren't buying a quantity and i i'm really reluctant to buy a lot of hats so i bought one hat on a really good uh, a good hat and it's embroidered with uh RV Travel Buddy logo and the, and it actually says the website on it. And so I laugh about this hat because when you buy one, it's not a bargain at all. So I think I paid almost $35, $45, uh, almost $40 for this thing with shipping and all thing. Uh, so And then I got it shipped up to Central Oregon without a friend and they had to ship it to me. So I've got like this $50 ball cap that came out awesome by the way and so eventually as we get when we get big enough i like to offer these hats because they one is they're awesome awesome hats and if you start watching our videos uh, pretty soon you'll see me starting to wear a different hat it's actually our new rv travel buddy hat and they're not cheap i'm sorry i i can't i gotta order like dozens and dozens to get better prices but they're gonna, you know, they'll be pricey hats if we sell them, but they're they're good hats. And if you guys um, know, if you want a good ball cap, you gotta pay a little extra. And I wanted to get a good hat. I mean, forget about the logo at first, but a good hat first, then a logo. And these things are embroidered, and they came out awesome. I was like, are you kidding me? I was, I was like, okay, maybe it was for me worth fifty bucks. No, we're not gonna sell them for. If we buy quantities of maybe a dozen or two dozen, we can get the price down, no no doubt. And when we sell them, if we were able to mark them up by two to five bucks, that would be amazing without the price being astronomical. So anyway, I have to laugh because if you see me with this hat on, just remember that's Rob's $50 RV Travel Buddy hat. And uh, But I wanted to see if it would come out good first. So you got to do that kind of stuff. So... Oh, well, but anyway, getting back to all the stuff. Hey, we want to hear from you. We really appreciate it. And we need your help and share us and, and let people know about us. Um, and, and anything we can do to make it better, we want you to feel more like our family, Sherry and I. And uh, so you're part of us. Um, now, I'm not going to take you shopping at Costco. Sorry. But uh, we really do share a lot of personal things and i think we're realistic we're at that age of like okay this isn't a fantasy there's some real things to consider in rv uh, full-time living and i hope we're kind of hitting the mark that if you're not thinking about these things we wish you would and and if there's some things that we can research and report to you to make um, to help you and help others please pass it along contact us we want to hear from you Well, we uh, found out something very fascinating about kids. So one of the reasons why we're down in uh, Arizona is our daughter lives down here and, and it gives us a chance to be with some of our grandkids. And one of them's three years old. And we're just now getting to know them a little bit because we you know, lived in Washington State. So Tracy, my daughter, uh, brought... <laughs> uh, my youngest grandkid to the RV and 
it's kind of funny. It's kids are interesting, and he's like, "Oh, great, he's got a kid story." Well, first of all, you got to remember, I, which I can't believe, because my daughter grew up in a, a mini farm. We had game birds. Uh, uh, she fly fishes, and she doesn't really get to do any of that right now. And her husband's not quite, you know, that even though he has kind of a good uh, outdoor background, they're really grinding it uh, right now and working hard and, and doing what they need to do to get the kids through school and all that stuff. Anyway, and I do have two older step uh, grandkids too uh, through that marriage, and so uh, they're age 12 and 14. Uh, actually, I think one just turned 15. Anyway, so I kind of I, I inherited some grandkids really fast, and that's awesome. So now we're down there, we get to see them more. So anyway, the daughter decided to bring the Kai over, uh, my youngest, to the RV. And, and first of all, he doesn't have pets. And so he loves Cinder, and he just wants to see Cinder, but terrified of Cinder at the same time. And he doesn't have a kitty either, and so he loves the kitty, and so he's like sneaking up trying to pet him but still scared and so cute to watch but what i found was fascinating is how a kid can be so fascinated by a screen door (laughs) i'm not kidding you i swear that kid went through our screen door at least 50 times which can be a little irritating but at the same time it's like well we're gonna find out just how tough this montana is and if, you know, if he messes up the door, I don't care. It's my, it's my grandkid for goodness sake. Um, if anybody's gonna mess my door up, it could be my grandkid. So anyway, open the door. I think he just loved the way it kind of clicked or whatever. He opened it, go down the steps, and then he closed the door, and then he loved the mechanical way it worked. I don't know what it was. And uh, I mean, it went on all morning, uh, open, close, open, close, open, close. Even the pets are going, really? I'm not even trying to sneak out because this kid's just up and down. So it was, I just find it amazing how uh, kids view things so much different than we do. Uh, and, and if there was a button to be pushed, I tell you, that kid wanted to push any button, so we you got him with the fact that you can't just push any button. But if there's a button to push, just call your grandkid over. They will push that button. They love it. Oh, nothing is better than pushing the button for the awning to go out. That made his day. Oh, my goodness. But, and then we, uh, just because we wanted to let him push a button, we let him turn on a fan. And, and it's like, you want to... You want to get in cahoots with your grandkid real real quick. Have a cat and a dog, that, especially if they don't have their own. And give them buttons to push and mechanical things. Oh, my God. I just couldn't believe I thought I was going to go insane, but at the same time, cracked me up. So, Grandma and Grandpa got to get used to having a three-year-old around. And so, <laughs> um, it brings back the memories. That's all I can say. But... Uh, I can also see why we're empty nesters now. It's like, all right, we put in our time. Thank you very much. Here's the kid back. <laughs> so, anyway, so we're having fun. We are achieving one of our big goals, getting to know our grandkids better. So, yes, that's why we're in Arizona. Well, here's a little RV tip that I've... Uh, Sherry and I are just learning this. Now, you, we keep bringing up the fact that we have been dealing with the little sugar ants and if you know some of the things they really seem to go after is like the the cat food uh the, um, dry food and uh, we actually pulled everything out of our cupboards and sprayed the inside with um uh, anti ant ant and roach uh um, spray and we got a new rig i mean this this can happen to anybody so uh, what we're discovering is is helpful is one is you can't get rid of these little buggers. That's one problem. Uh, no matter what we seem to be doing, we've got the little uh, motels and we got we spray the outside and they still show up. They're just relentless. But um, what we're finding is to, to help the problem from and especially ruining food. If you're buying like pastries or cookies or anything sweet or anything. Uh, uh, crackers or anything you got that you open up and you just kind of throw them in there and, um, is we're individually wrapped like if we buy 
oh, we'll say donut holes or anything like that. We actually bought a special container to pour them into and lock. It's a Tupperware thing. But like for donuts or maybe uh, uh, things like that, we'll actually um, take out Ziploc bags and do each one individually. And so now, uh, I guess the big RV tip is to be proactive to keep critters out of your rig. I don't care how dainty you think you are or how clean you keep your rig. I can guarantee you Sherry is very detail oriented. Uh, and she keeps our kitchen um, sparkling. And, uh, but if you make one mistake of leaving a ice cream bowl not rinsed out or something, um, it, that's just saying, hello, come on in. Uh, and once one little sugar ant finds it, he tells the rest. And the next morning, he's like, Lord, where did these guys come from? And, and I mean, you can have that happen even right after you sprayed the whole rig. These guys are relentless. So uh, to keep it at a uh, control, and we still spray regularly, um, the proactive things you want to do with food is you probably won't, don't have to worry about so much in a home. It can happen in a home too, but um, things like cookies, things like uh, pastries, uh, if you keep them in your cupboard, um, breads, uh, uh, rolls, things like that, individually wrap them. When you get from the grocery store, immediately take them out of their package and individually wrap them. And if that will definitely uh, reduce the issue it won't make the issue go away, but it'll definitely don't. What we're trying to do is don't give our critters a reason to come visit us. So, especially in the kitchen area, clean those counters. Uh, keep your floors clean. If you spill anything that's sweet, like a Coke or a juice or um, anything like that, uh, clean it up right away. Um, and spray regularly uh, anywhere that a possible critter could get in and of course all the openings in your RV check in under your, all your cupboards and seal those holes with that um, uh, spray foam and, and if you can uh, put um, steel wool in it too uh, that'll keep mice out and seal anything you can find that's an opening into your living area um, do your best. Your slides are kind of at the mercy of the fact that you have those corners and you have those rubber um, uh, slide. Um, I'm not sure what the proper name is for that, but they don't, there really is a little error between outside and inside. And so uh, I guess you could get really vigilant and kind of stuff uh, some kind of cloth or something in every corner of your RV if you're going to be parked for a while. But uh, we spray uh, just to make sure that if any critter comes to those corners, that'll give them a bad taste. And and the Montana fifth wheels, by the way, have two lips, um, uh, rubber lips, uh, that, that seal the seal the RV. And, um, and I know most of them don't have that double uh, protection, but it's still there. It's still an opening. Uh, the critters can get through. And those and. I can guarantee you those little sugar ants are getting in there. So what I just want to pass on is get in the habit right away, even if you don't have a problem, to individually wrap those kind of things that would attract, especially things like um, like the sugar ants. So there's a little RV tip. I hope it's helpful to you. And I would highly recommend that you start doing it now. And it's not a bad idea to just do it in your home. So anyway, there you go. This show has definitely touched on probably sensitive areas and, and controversial a little bit of like what are we going to do in our retirement and how does the RV affect it. And, and, and our whole conversation includes our RV. And so we've said in shows before this one is how helpful it has been to be able to live a very comfortable life with modern conveniences and, and new for us, we bought a newer rig, uh, so we have all the conveniences of home, and uh, and yet we're able to reduce our overhead. We're not paying fifteen hundred a month for rent, and and then you got all of your utilities on top of that, and we're not 
static and we have options and so sherry has one of those careers where we could almost go anywhere and she could eventually find something for work if she we really had to um so one of the things i i haven't mentioned to you that much but we also do other things uh with uh, cutting edge enterprises did you know that we sell domains we actually, if you're interested in buying a domain, we have at northwestdomains.com. You can buy domains there. We get a small commission on it. We're talking just a little bit of thing. But what's really cool about ours is there's no gimmicks. Like if you bought some um, a domain at GoDaddy and some of those other places, uh, they'll you'll get on their mail list. They'll uh, try to get you to do hosting right away, and and it's relentless commercialism. When you buy a domain from us, you get a domain, you get it's private, you have your own account, and it's protected, and you can host it anywhere, anywhere you want. And so the other thing people don't know is we actually have our own servers. So ours are commercial servers that are in server farms, protected, do the real thing. We just run them remotely. So we actually host a lot of our clients' websites. And uh, so the last thing is we have a site called helpwithblogs.com and how that works is if you like to have your own website your own blog we specialize in WordPress which is just a software that you can do to your blog with on your own domain which is the best way to do a blog and a website they're one to the same the new blogs now look like a website what's really nice is the search engines love blogs and your content and they're easy to teach and so what we do is what you may not know about is people are scared about one is how do I get a domain and then um, the other thing is we help you figure out how to get your domain to work we put it on a hosting server our own and we have a special program that for twenty nine ninety five a month uh, then you have to buy your domain separately which is twelve dollars twelve ninety five anyway and then uh, um, what we do is we set up your domain on our servers we put up all the software we set up your database we get all the essentials going and then we coach you so you can call us like any time now sometimes we don't you'll miss us and we'll have to call you back but but um, but we're here for coaching we help you get your blog started and then as time goes on as you're feeling more comfortable uh, you can switch your account to just hosting which is just twelve ninety five a month and if you do some shopping around you find out that's a bargain but what's really nice about it is you have someone to talk to we show you um, silly things that you may not know about how to get your images up how to reduce them what kind of little softwares that might work that's an inexpensive uh, this doesn't have to be expensive but don't be afraid if you really want to start your own blog or your own website and if you want somebody that's friendly and it's typically me that you deal with uh, maybe you work and you can only talk to somebody in the evening and uh, we don't charge by the hour thing it's all part of that twenty nine ninety five and you can pay that for as long as you want and when you sit feel like alright I think I can go off on my own now we just drop you down to the twelve ninety five a month and you're that's your hosting account and that helps pay for our servers our servers aren't free we pay for them too so it just it all works for you so if you're ever interested in getting your own domain go to northwestdomains.com those links are down below in our description and uh, if you want to at least talk to us um, uh, go to helpwithblogs.com uh, shoot us a note we told you how to contact us and you can just talk to us about them give you a call and just say this is what we do there's a couple familiar people that are on the internet you're probably watching uh, that are actually doing this with us and it helps us it helps pay for our servers and the cost to do all this and at the same time they're gaining uh, these websites are totally under their control the only thing is not under their control is the server we take care of the servers the things that you don't want to mess with and that's what's cool about it you just say okay your domain set up your software's there here's how you log on to it and we'll help you along until you feel comfortable and that's it's just that easy yep it's just that easy and yeah there'll be a few things you go that's intimidating and it's, and it's hard to get and you've been afraid to do a website that's the purpose of this is to get you past that fear and if some reason you want to go off on your own totally no big deal you own your domain you have control of it you can move it to any server you want 
Um, if you can find a better deal than twelve ninety five for hosting, go for it. Um, but you might get a lot of com commercialism and stuff. The twenty nine ninety five allows you to get personal service. That's that's it. There's no setup fee either. That's just how it is. You have to pay for your domain. That's separate, and you have to renew your domain every year. So you always, that's an automatic thing. That's separate from us. A domain is a domain. It's it's absolutely useless unless you put it on a server or have it hosted somewhere. And our servers, I can guarantee you, are uh, good servers. And so, if you're interested more, just contact us, and I'll tell you more about it. Uh, and it's a great program. We don't make big bucks off of it, but it's definitely helpful to get our costs down. And uh, that's just like the stickers and things like that. It's all, uh, that's a service. That's the actual business thing we do on uh, outside of just the RV stuff. So uh, we also help with marketing and things like that too. We also t uh, teach you how to make your blog um, talk to your social network. So if you post something on your blog it will go on your Facebook automatically and there's all kinds of cool little things you can do you can get a newsletter going like we have it's all automated and you can have people uh, get notified whenever you update your website it's all just cool stuff and it doesn't have to cost a mint so that's kind of the purpose behind it so uh, something you probably didn't know about us and so I passed that on so it's getting to the end of uh, it's been an hour so boy time goes by but I want to thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio please if you get a chance to buy a sticker and put it on your window to help advertise us or just tell people about, about us or go to our or join our website or join our Facebook um, RV Talk Radio has got their own group and uh, please come on over to RV Travel Buddy and we'd love to hear your stories, see pictures of your uh, RV and your and all the great things that happen, and and, and bad too. But we don't, you know, if it's bad, we don't want, we don't want anything bad for anybody. So, but yeah, we want you to share your stories, and uh, uh, we are totally grateful for you being a loyal listener. Uh, don't forget, you can also listen to our podcast through iTunes through your phone which is a great way to start your day and listen to us at lunchtime, things like that. So if you have any questions about any of that kind of stuff I just talked about, shoot us a note and I'll explain it or even give you a call and explain how it all works. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening. Please tell everybody about us. Please take the time to subscribe, share our videos, share our podcasts, and be part of our family. Thank you and see you next week. Bye now. Thank you.